Thank you so much for joining us today. We are super, super excited to welcome you to our first series in our series of webinars that we're going to be hosting uh, called Mastering Marketing. So our target uh, that we want to achieve today is we really want to empower marketing managers with the knowledge that you need to go out there and be the best that you can be in today's fast-changing landscape. So today we are covering a topic that is pretty much uh, hot on, on, everybody's, uh, on everybody's radar, which is AI. And I think it's, uh, if you haven't really um, heard much about ChatGPT, then potentially you've been living on another planet. But uh, I think the reason that you're here is because you've heard about it and you want to know how to master it. So we've got a really, really, really exciting lineup planned for you today. And the, the great thing about today's session is we are super, super, super practical. This is not a, an exercise in theory. This is not, we're not here to teach you anything that you can't actually take away and physically apply in your day today. It should make a difference in your life today. And um, <clears throat> so just a little bit of housekeeping. As I said, we're gonna keep this practical, it's not abstract. As Michael said, uh, pop all your questions live into the um, Q&A section and we will get to them uh, when we uh, wrap up each section. Um, we have enabled closed captions. So for, for those of you who like to listen with captions on, that is an option that is available to you. Uh, we are recording the session and we will send it to you afterwards. So if you have to hop off or you couldn't make the session, you will get it as a link afterwards. We'll also load it up on our YouTube channel. And you can access it there. And the slides are going to be available to you as well. And the great thing is that we have included a, a resources a repository at the end of this PowerPoint, you'll be able to find a whole bunch of amazing resources and links. And Irma is also making available to you some of her super powerful templates. So there's a, uh, some really exciting things uh, waiting for you at the end of the session. So without any further ado, let me uh, kick off by introducing my amazing guest speakers today. So if you haven't already uh, met Irma. Irma is an absolute marketing strategic technology guru. She is a global trainer, trained some of the top blue chip companies around the world in everything on digital marketing from the latest in Google Analytics all the way through to uh, omni-channel uh, marketing strategy, marketing channels, social media. Welcome uh, Irma and thank you for joining us today. We're also going to be joined by, we are joined by Michael, and Michael is my uh, business partner at Chip One. Michael is also a marketing technologist through and through. He is a design engineer who solves problems using design. Uh, he heads up the uh, design studio, he heads up, heads up the technology studio, and he also uh, is the CEO of Chip One. Welcome, Michael. Thanks, Lou. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> let's kick off with. Um, our very, very first uh, session, which we're going to be going through a lot of sort of jargony words, which I'm not going to, I don't want this to be too technical. I don't think we have anybody in the room that really wants to go into a deep dive into the technology behind this. So we're not going to be, uh, you know, going through all of the technical facts behind, you know, natural language processing, tokens, uh, large language models and stuff like that, but we have included this handy little glossary. So it is in the PowerPoint, and if you do get lost, you can look it up. So let's kick up with our very first poll, which is how often do you use AI at the moment? So let's have a look. If you can see the poll, or um, if you can't see the poll, just put your answers there in chat. But my question to you now is, how often do you use AI right now? Let's Let's have a... Let's have a show of hands. Can you all see the poll? There we go. So how often do you use AI right now? Let's have a look at what <clears throat> everybody says. Are you using it daily? Weekly, monthly, or you haven't yet played with it? I'm curious to know. Okay, so we do have some people that are already using it daily, some who've tried it weekly, and 
I would say the majority have not yet tried it, which is amazing because you're definitely in the right room. By the end of the session, we will have demystified it and you're going to be playing with it and it's going to, you're going to love it. It's going to be your new best friend. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. So let's just look at what is AI. So you've already encountered AI in your life. You've being served ads, you know, AI is not something new. The, the Google algorithm, the search algorithm uses AI, machine learning, it's been around for a very long time. And, you know, if, if you've ever chatted to a chat bot, uh, you know, and been served up some results, everybody knows AI to a certain extent. But I think what has made this very, very different is it's generative AI. So, what ChatGPT has done is they've basically pulled this massive uh, repository of, of information that is available out there from just crawling the internet and all the way down to Wikipedia. And they have this massive, massive repository of information that they have trawled. And they're basically smooshing it together and giving you what they think you are looking for as well as uh, using natural language. And that's what makes it so powerful is we're moving into an era where you can say to your computer, use this database, use this database and uh, target this persona and create a campaign for me that sells more of this product to the people who have the greatest propensity to buy. And you can literally type that instruction in and the AI will be able to generate a campaign, the creative, the words, the text, post it, create the ads, run the ads, optimize the ads, interpret the results, and you can basically sit back and read your coffee, and that literally can happen within a, the space of a few minutes. So this is the, the exciting and slightly scary world that we are moving into, and very, very fast. And I think that's really what's hit everybody is the rip, rap, rapidity how rapidly a chat GPT hit us in November. And I instantly saw articles coming out in November, December, it was already well on my radar. And I mean, here we are in February, you know, and everyone's been talking about it. Okay, so if you have a look at this little video here, this was created by Fanaki, which is a Google um, text to video uh, experiment, also AI. And the, 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 the prompt was a teddy bear swimming in the ocean, and you can see how powerful this text, uh, these, these command prompts are becoming uh, in terms of AI from video, audio. Um, we've all seen, you know, if you watch, if you're on TikTok or if you're on YouTube shorts, you've all seen how, you know, singers' voices can be emulated, writing styles can be emulated. Um, the power of, you know, from, from deep fake video technology, the power of AI is... It's, it's really, really phenomenal. And we're here to show you how as marketers, you can master that. So for example, look at this uh, tweet that somebody shared. Hey, Bing AI, which is powered by uh, ChatGPT, look up research on luxury brand names, then make up good names for a luxury smartwatch inspired by Shakespeare. Give me a positioning statement and a Shakespearean quote for each designer logo. And finally create a mid-journey journey is also an AI design program prompt to generate a prototype image. And all of that within seconds. So as you can see, the table is created and the prompts were created, which were then put it into mid journey and the designs were created. So AI really is there, at, you know, to serve marketers and to really help us do a better job. If you look at the different industrial revolutions, what stands out to me is the speed that we are moving into the new revolution. So we're well into the fourth industrial revolution. But if you look at how slowly the first industrial revolution and the second industrial revolution, the third, you know, there were long stretches of time between them, but the fourth and the fifth are literally like boom, boom. Uh, you know, the, the, the fourth industrial revolution, everyone for a while has been talking about AI, robotics, internet of things, blockchain, crypto. It's been around for a, for a while now, and by for a while, I mean a couple of years. <laughs> and now we are definitely well into, you know, where AI is starting to be able to work with humans in a cooperative sense. So actually robotics AI technology is working with us and there's a cooperation that is happening between the two um, before they take over the world and kill us all. 
just kidding. So why use AI? Obviously, it's it's efficiency. I mean, we've we've been using AI in our business for quite some time. We've been using AI writing um, tools, but for the first time, it's really made the speed like just phenomenal. Uh, you know, the same copywriter can now produce ten times as much copy, and and we weren't making money on our writing because our writing took so long because we're so we're thorough. And, you know, the research takes a really long time, the writing, the composition, you put everything together, then the editing and the proofreading and the, you know, the rewriting. And now actually we, our, our copywriters are able to be so much more productive in what we're doing. So from an efficiency point of view, it really, you know, it makes so much sense. Uh, it's funny, everyone says, you know, robots don't take time off. However, uh, they do have glitches and, you know, the server errors. So you'll see from ChatGPT, it is very up and down. Uh, you can't absolutely, you know, you can't fire all your copywriters because um, unfortunately ChatGPT very often doesn't work. And they have server overload because literally the whole world is using ChatGPT. I'm sitting here in Germany and, you know, my uh, uh, friends of mine down the road are using ChatGPT every single day in German. It's a huge global phenomenon. So uh, in terms of creativity, definitely, because it can give you so many ideas, literally at the touch of a button. And obviously in terms of innovation, because there's so much, uh, the, the power of chat GPT and this GPT technology is this bedrock on which so much can lie. You know, you can create Excel tables, you can create chatbots, you can create um, WordPress plugins, all with it, like the, like instantaneously websites, it can literally just generate it for you. Um, so so I, I see it more and more and more. It should be being introduced to your business right now if it isn't already. From a customer service point of view, you know, I always say that marketing is only for people who can write. I've always said that if you can't write, you shouldn't be in marketing. And literally since November, anyone can be a marketer, anyone can write. It is, it's literally opened the doors for anybody to be in marketing because if you haven't put your, if you haven't put your, even your emails to your clients through ChatGPT, if you can't write and you literally, your grammar, your sentence construction made English isn't your first language, you can literally do it with ChatGPT. So customer service, they, you know, chatbot integrations that can, uh, that can that are being built that are absolutely powerful supporting customer service sales and lead generation i mean um i've got a resource i can share with you about how it can create thousands of unique sales prompts within seconds um so so in terms of creating uniqueness and personalization that is really where the power of it lies that we're seeing that it can actually take data pull micro niche market segments and create hyper personalized messaging for micro segments. And if you know me, I and Irma as well, we're big fans of personas. We're big fans of segmented target marketing. It's something we're always banging on about. Um, in terms of marketing, obviously copywriting for your emails, copywriting for your website, copywriting for your blogs, your social media content plans, strategy, design, some illustrations, Mike will get into that. Some of the challenges around there for SEO, your paid ads copy, again, chatbots, data analytics, strategy creation. And then in your development and web dev, obviously your those teams should be looking at, um, you know, again, chatbots, plugins, coding. There's so much that ChatGPT can do. Um, so if you look here, as I mentioned, retail, telco, utility company, looking at uh, integrating ChatGPT, and this is Bain.com, um, that's that's partnered up with the guys from OpenAI to create solutions for uh, the financial services, you know, in marketing, uh, to create specific applications that just take it to the next level. Um, and here, as you can see, this is the generative AI application landscape that has literally blossomed overnight. And you can see where this finger is pointing, it's pointing to the baseline. And you can see that the base of all of these programs are, is some sort of a, a GPT 
uh, AI platform. And on, the, on sitting on top of it are all these different kinds of uh, applications that, you know, the different skin that just pull from the same machine. But you can see that the, the power is definitely there in terms of text, in terms of video, image, coding, 3D, speech, and a lot more is still to come. It's very much still in its, in its infancy. So will it take my job? That's probably a question that's definitely on, you know, on your mind. And if you look back at the Luddites in the 1800s, have you ever been called a Luddite? Now you know why. A Luddite is somebody who resists technology. And the Luddites were uh, textile workers in Great Britain. And along with mach machination, machines were coming in to take over their job and they re rebelled and they were very unhappy and they were breaking the machines. And if you look at the industry now, there, you know, the textile industry is one of the biggest industries still in the world, and it is highly dominated by, by machines. And you know, we don't want to be the Luddites. We want to be, if you if you watch that great movie, um, Hidden Figures, you know, where the human computers who were doing the ma the mathematical calculations were being replaced by the IBM computer. If you haven't watched the movie, go and watch it, it's brilliant. And uh, one of the ladies saw the potential, and she first saw that all her ladies were going to be um, were going to be replaced by this IBM. And the first thing that she did was she got the manual. She learned she learned IBM. She became one of the top computer programmers back in the day. So this is our our challenge now: is to not resist the technology, because with the Luddites, the machines were replacing the the manual labor, the hand labor, whereas now AI is replacing brain labor. And so this is the challenge that we're sitting at now, is, um, is how do we make sure that it doesn't replace what we do? So, so if you look at this uh, open letter that the CEO of Fiverr put into the um, New York Times addressing uh, the AI, I think that the threat is real to the lower end of the, um, the, the marketing chain and the low end of the digital supplier chain. So basically, it, you know, a lot of the fiber suppliers could potentially see a bit of a threat happening there. And that is potentially why fiber was so quick to jump onto, um, onto this and to say, no, 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 guys, we're okay. We, we're playing with AI. So I think it's going to, so if you ask the question, will AI take my job? The, the answer is probably not for a while. You've still got some time and you need to repurpose yourself, you know, into potentially an AI prompt engineer or an AI product manager or an AI copywriter. So um, AI definitely is not uh, going, cannot replace you yet because at this point in time, it is still, for example, the copywriting is still very dry and definitely needs a lot of human intervention. So any articles that we write using it, we have to add personality and it is it is 10 day old porridge dry. So it's also not current, so breaking news, it doesn't, it can't do. There are a lot of inaccuracies, both in the code and in the copy that you have to check for. It has to be curated, highly, highly curated and adjusted um, by humans. So, um, and obviously, design is still very, very, very much a challenge. I think on the illustration side, it's probably got more uh, application at this point in time. And design is, you know, still a bit of a long way off. So without any further ado, I would like to hand over to you over to Irma, who's going to talk through AI and marketing strategy. Thank you, Irma. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, AI has been around for a while. I think it's just come to the forefront a whole lot more with the launch of ChatGPT um, since November, but it's been with us for a while. So we'd love to know, um, have you used um, you know, AI for marketing strategy specifically? And we'd love to know because I think um, people don't always are aware of how strategy can be influenced by, by AI. I'd love to know, have you used it? You used AI in your marketing strategy before? Just give us a yes or a no in the poll. If your poll doesn't work, let us know in the chat. Have you used it in strategy specifically? Eva? So we'll give it a second just to populate in there. Let us know in the chat if you can't access the poll. All right, I don't see. Ah, uh, yeah, most haven't. Ah, uh, well, you're in for a surprise today, right? So Write yourselves. I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT in strategy. 
So strategy comes back to the four pillars on the screen right now. So we always start our question off whenever we launch a campaign, or even if we have to compile a whole digital strategy, is what are we trying to achieve, right? So um, if, if you are in an agency working with clients, that should be your very first question to your client at brief. Um, we know when the brief happens. What are we trying to achieve? What does success look like? And then also we need to measure, um, we need to decide on what to measure to determine whether we are making progress or if we are achieving success or not. So very important is we, um, the, the objectives and goals of what we're trying to achieve actually informs everything else in strategy, which then is all about who we communicate to. So remember, as digital marketers, and that's what we all are, what we do as digital marketers is we influence behavior, right? So um, in all of our channels, in all of our communications, we actually need our audiences to take some action, right? Click here, download, buy now, visit our shop, whatever the action is. But that is where we need to know who are these people that we are communicating to. And as um, Dylan mentioned earlier, you need to be very, very clear about that person on the other side of the screen that we're creating content for, right? And that, that's where I'm gonna show you how AI can actually help us achieve that. And also we need to know what is showing up on the news feeds of our audience from our competitors. Remember they are limited, we have limited space on news feeds, whichever news feeds we are using or in inboxes, email marketing. So we need to know um, what our audiences are seeing from us and our competitors, right? So we'll come back to the target audience. Then once we know what we're trying to achieve and who we're communicating to, then only can we decide or be informed in terms of where our audiences are at, which platforms are they using, um, what type of content would help them make the decision to move them through the funnel and get them to take action. And then also a very uh, often overlooked part of that third pillar in terms of your marketing activities is the budget and resources. Crucial, right? Because we can have beautiful strategies and beautiful channel strategies, but if our resources not just budget resources, but skill resources, time resources, assets are limited, then we pretty much can do only a limited amount of channel marketing, right? And then lastly, very important is measurement, data-driven decisions, because if we measure the right key performance indicators and metrics, we will know whether we are achieving success or not in terms of our marketing strategies, and you know where we need to actually spend our time. So we're going to dive into the four pillars today now, and um, to actually check, or I'm going to show you how to to use ChatGPT. Now you will see I've just uh, created a generic example for the Digital Marketing Academy to illustrate the the power of ChatGPT. So um, I just want to take a step back to um, our opening statements earlier. AI will not replace humans because it's not a magic wand. You, we still need the human element to understand the people that we are marketing to and to bring experience. So a freshly graduated student, fresh from university with no experience whatsoever, cannot just input prompts and um, you know, questions into chat DPT and magically become a strategist, right? So that's the good news, is um, you still need the experience to be able to get the right output out of the tool. So here on your screen is an example. And we wanted to demonstrate ChatGPT live, but because it's so glitchy, we didn't want to take that risk. So this is an example of a prompt that I entered into ChatGPT, right? So obviously you will know up front, it will never be as generic as on your screen, what you or your clients are trying to achieve, right? So um, you will see that my prompt in there is quite generic, create three small smart goal statements for DMA to um, you know, promote an advanced digital marketing course. And I've broken it down into the final stages. So then the result that came up from ChatGPT was the following, right? And you can see that it's fantastic. It's awesome. ChatGPT broke it down for us in terms of the final stages of what our, what our goal statements could look like for the awareness stage, consideration, conversion stages of our marketing efforts. But also this can give us an, a, a um, foundation to start working from. Because in digital marketing, all of you may know that it, there's a lot of repetitive work, right? A lot of foundational groundwork that happens where AI can help us do a lot of that 
um, where we can then bring our expertise and tweak. So you will see that from an objective perspective, that was the very first prompt. And then if we go to the next part, um, so focusing on the, the objective um, part of, of our strategy, um, Dylan, you can just maybe click for, for the next prompt example. And I'm gonna show you in there. Oh, sorry, yeah, got it, right. Then, um, no, did it? Am I seeing the right screen now? Yeah, so can you see that also? Apologies on that. You can also tell the AI platform, and we're focusing on ChatGPT specifically now in this example, where it's very text-based. Often without specific prompts and instructions, it will give text-based results. But you will see that in my prompt, I actually asked ChatGPT to define the KPIs and metrics for the smart goals that we've just created in table format. So I copied the result and pasted it into the chat and the result was then the table format that came up. Fantastic, right? So now we have a structure to start working off from, right? So now we know for awareness, typically what the KPIs in this scenario or environment would be to focus on in the different stages and also which metrics to focus on. As a strategist, this is often the question that digital marketers ask us and from an agency perspective, ask us which metrics should we measure? That's often very, very challenging. So this tool can help break down um, you know, which metrics specifically can help us to achieve those objectives. So moving on then, we can also see that you and um, I have now taken it a step further, right? And asked, right, so based on the objectives that we're trying to achieve, still very generic, just for this example, for the sake of this example, also create a journey map for um, one of the target audiences, in this case, that could be a, a, another digital agency owner. So can you see now the result is touch points broken down, emotions that we should be focusing on in terms of getting the behaviors to, um, that we are influencing and the actions that we need to create, which brings us to the next part in our, the four pillars of our strategy, who are we going to communicate to? Now, obviously, in any industry or any business, there will be more than one persona. So in a B2B environment, a decision-making process is often based on different role players. You may have a technical buyer of your product. You may have a financial decision maker, an executive decision maker. I mean, so all, the way that a, a financial director makes a purchasing decision is completely different to the way that a technical user of a service um, or, or you know, technology service would make a decision whether to use the, the um, service or not. So in this case, I've asked for a persona description, but can you see that the prompts that entered, um, if you could just go one back, Ellen, sorry, was very, very specific. I actually prompted, please indicate these areas. So for a, if you enter a generic prompt, which I did um, initially, was create a B2B persona description for um, a global digital agency owner. And it was very fluffy, but that's where your expertise is needed to guide the AI to give you the right results. So on the next slide, you will see that it's, um, I know it's a, the text is a little bit small, but that's the level of detail we then get, right? Broken down very specifically. So typically, what would an agency owner, as an example, look like? But you should go even further and um, specify, is it a, an agency owner in South Africa? Is it a digital agency focusing on B2C brands or B2B brands? All right, can you see the, re the quality of your results is completely dependent on the quality of your input. So you really need that expertise and in-depth understanding of your client or your business that you are representing in terms of getting the right quality information out of this. So how this information was being used um, is in, in terms of all of these detailed sections, if you can then enter it into a visual tool like the SEM Rush Persona tool, as an example, and that will then give you a visual result of a what a person or a persona that we would typically create content for look like. Now, Michael will touch on the design part a little bit later, but I just want to um, quickly just prompt something again in terms of the personas and why they are so important. And um, we often think that the persona exercise is a waste of time. But if you have a detailed description of the person that you, whose actions you are trying to influence, it makes your copywriting easier because you know who on the other side of the screen am I writing to. 
from a design perspective, who on the other side of the screen am I creating visual assets for? Because the way that a CEO of a um, billion dollar tech company in the US would engage with visual content on LinkedIn can be completely different to a B2C client who needs to buy fashion items, right? So that's why the persona document is so powerful. So now moving on to the third pillar of the strategies where we get to the tactics and the channels, you can also then use this tool to um, actually create, get some tactical ideas, right? In terms of the channels that you would have, may have identified as the assets available, what then could be the, the next step in terms of creating tactical platforms? You would see I gave a breakdown of the channels in this example in the front, but also asked chat GPT, please include the channel, the objectives, because remember, we still always need to relate, relate back to what we are trying to achieve in terms of objectives, the actions and which metrics to focus on. The result then, um, you will see on the next flat, um, screen is again in table format, depends on how you need your information. Very often, table format makes it easy at a glance to actually see a whole lot of information and make sure that we have everything included. But by default, chat GPT is text-based, so it will not give it to you in table format by default. Right, so be very, very clear in your uh, prompts and recommendations. So moving along with the four pillars of the strategy then, comes the third pillar, which includes content, right? And as um, Dylan rightly said earlier, we always need to create content. So I'd love to know from you, what are your thoughts? How important do you think um, you know, how important is it for copywriters to, to be able to use AI technology? I'd love to hear from everybody. Just let us know. Um, you can indicate your results or your, your responses in the poll, or you can type in the chat. The poll's not working. Just give us a quick note in the chat. What do you think? Very important, not important at all. And what are your thoughts? Okay, I can see some results. Very important, absolutely. Valian says on a scale of one, zero to 10, it's a 10, absolutely. Thank you. So the right prompt is up on the screen, um, but I think we can agree that it is absolutely crucial for copywriters to be able to use these tools, All right? And we'll give it a second to just populate. So if you wanna pop your answer in the poll, you're more than welcome. Let's give it a moment, but I think most of you responded that it is very important. But we can then close the poll. Um, thank you and move on. Thank you very much. Right. So, oh, fantastic. So, 91% of everybody in the school agreed, right? It is important. But we often think that for a text based AI tool like ChatGPT, it's only about content. It is not, right? It's so much more. I'm going to show you in a second now. But another example of a prompt based on the digital marketing. Academy example is, um, you can also use this tool to help you with a pillar prompting suggestions. Now, why is this important? In digital marketing, all paths lead back to the website, right? All paths always lead back to the website. That's where information is shared. That's where lead generation happens. That's where conversion happens. But we need to support our SEO strategy with the right pillars of content to focus on in our channel strategies and communication. And that's often the part that marketers battle with in terms of what are the pillars of content that we should focus on. So in this instance, we can see that based on what the prompts that, now this was all done in the same chat, right? That's very important. The prompt or the follow-up questions were built upon the previous result. So remember, it is a, a bot that we're working with. So if you are going to give random um, prompts, you will get random results. So we build onto our prompts to get the right information. So chat GPT then very um, kindly suggested six pieces of pillar content that we could focus on for digital marketing um, academy. All right, so if we then have a look and take it even further, and that's where the point comes in in terms of the threat of AI and our jobs is we can no longer be only specialists in key areas. We actually need to know every aspect of digital marketing because the SEO bit of your website is no longer only the responsibility of your SEO specialist. 
even if you are responsible for Facebook campaigns, you need to know which keywords to include in your content to trigger the right behavior patterns and results from your audience. So as an example, um, I asked ChatGPT, give me a list of keywords for SEO. And this is, because I'm sure you will agree with me, generating keyword lists are often time consuming, right? And we often are so involved in this process that we can't think anymore. And that's where a tool like AI can actually just help us and prompt us to actually um, you know, broaden our horizon. So we're not just prompting the AI, AI can prompt us to actually you know, see things that we may have missed. So then as a result, as an example, once we have the objectives that we focus on, the audience that we're creating content for, the channels that we are going to utilize, we can then also um, take it a step further. And in this case, my prompt was create a process flow for automated marketing. You know, and actually content marketing in this case. So you will see that um, this is very generic. But can you see the prompt results in there? In terms of lead generation and utilize various channels, that's very, very generic. So, but it can actually help to open up your mind in terms of certain um, process steps to include. But the expertise is then needed to actually create relevant content. Right, so moving along then, we can also then, um, take it a step further. So I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with building a story brand. If not, um, maybe I can just ask our moderator to type the name of the book in the chat. It's called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Read it. If you are a marketer, that's the best book you will probably ever read if you are in content creation. And I just asked ChatGPT um, to write a value proposition as an example for Digital Marketing Academy based on the principles of building a story brand. So I actually included the template. I included the areas that we needed that I wanted in the value proposition. And ta-da, let me show you what the value proposition then looks like. Awesome, isn't it? And I can tell you before chat GPT, I've written value propositions like the one on the screen over and over again, right? But this tool within seconds, can actually then create a foundation or a baseline. It's obviously not perfect, right? But where we can then build onto um, this information. So it, it's a huge time saving um, as, as one of the main benefits. So then also moving along to the fourth pillar of the strategy comes the measurement part, right? Because if we don't measure, we don't know what is working. The whole point, and while I'm, I'm doing the intro here, you can maybe just give us a quick indication in the poll again, um, if you think there are any benefits, um, you know, in terms of using AI in data and analytics, what are your thoughts? Let's thank you for the um, name of the book in the chat, but let us know what, what do you think the benefits of using AI in analytics are? Welcome to type in the chat or give us your vote in the poll. I don't want to waste too much time on the poll. We've still got a bit of content to cover, but um, so we'll come back, right? But just give it some thought. Um, but that brings us then to the fourth pillar of our strategy is bringing all of it together, right? Now we need to know, right? So um, while I'm talking, you're still welcome to um, cast your, your votes in the poll, is now that we have our objectives, the channels we're going to focus on, the tactics that we need to develop, the KPIs or key performance indicators that we need to focus on, and the metrics and then we can also you know, really decide on which types of data to focus on in terms of measurement. So it's kind of like an even split. Um, most of you, or you kind of agreed that it's about um, you know, using measurement and data in, in AIs to have accurate data analysis, to visualize your data, and also um, to enable predictive modeling and forecasting, absolutely. And then a few were not sure. Right? So let me show you then how this could help. So in terms of the fourth pillar of the strategy, then in terms of measurement, um, thanks Dylan, if you could just move that one on for us. This is where chat GPT and not only chat GPT, um, but the other um, tools can actually help to, to really um, focus on the right metrics. So tools, and you will see that there's in the tool list, tools like um, Google Data Studio or formerly Google Data Studio, it's now called Google Looker Studio is tools where we can utilize 
um, the platform to actually help us analyze our results from different platforms, pull it into one platform where we don't have to focus on a whole lot of metrics going forward. Right, so now knowing what we know, and ChatGPT is only one tool, I see 100% of you are going to give it a go. Absolutely fantastic, then I've done my job, right? This is just the beginning. I need you to actually help this tool, all of the tools that you are going to use to get to the right results. So fantastic. Now, thank you very much. I'm going to hand you over to Michael to actually then explain to us how to use artificial intelligence in the design aspect. Thanks, Mike. All right. Okay, so we're going to start off talking a little bit about uh, image generation. Um, so we're going to discuss these four platforms a little bit. Um, so we've got Dolly 2, Jasper, Midjourney, and Runway. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of these or have ever given a bash. If you have, uh, give us a shout here in the, in the chat. Let us know what you think. Um, let's start off with Dolly 2. So Dali 2 is predominantly an image generator, and it, it has a few other tools as well, um, but it is seen as the, the biggest, most dominant in, in the market at the moment. Um, so let's go to the next slide. If we ask Dali 2 to create an image for us, so it can create realistic images, it can create art, um, really anything you want. So for example, here, the prompt is an astronaut riding a horse um, in a photographic, a photorealistic style. So there you can see the output and you can see below that there's a, a lot of other different options that it comes up with. Then you can change it to a pencil drawing. You can change it to the style of Andy Warhol. So you get completely different results, 100% authentic, original, and, and based on the, the style and the prompts that you put in. Um, so that gives a, a really nice overview of, of the types of images that, that you can uh, create, um, but it all really comes down to that prompt. Uh, the next tool that they have is, is a tool that can actually expand images. I don't know if you've ever had an image and, and you've said, oh, you wish the photographer had just cropped it a little bit wider. Um, so this is now your perfect opportunity. You can insert your image or you can take the image that AI has already generated for you and you can actually extend that image and it'll work out what is the, the best thing to happen in the rest of your background. Um, this is a tool that we've, we've experimented with a little bit. It, it still does need a lot of work. It really is in its infancy. Um, as the results we came up with weren't great, um, but I'm sure we're going to see it um, progress in leaps and bounds over the next few days and weeks and years, especially. Uh, this next tool is, is very cool also. So say you've got a, a photo of an office building and you now want to see what it would look like with a couch in it. Um, you can just ask it to add a couch. Now, if, if you had to have your graphic designer do this, um, it's going to take quite a bit of time. Um, this took seconds. So image editing, you can do with just text prompts. Here it takes an original image, so you could take a, a photo and, and you could ask it to create variations of that image for you. Um, here you can see a famous painting and all the variations of that, that image there. You can see that there's definitely a likeness in there, but they're all different and original. Um, okay, <laughs> so these were our first attempts at using Dolly 2. Uh, you can see here uh, our prompts weren't great and our output wasn't great either. Um, so, for example, you can see we asked for a photorealistic high detail image of an empty corner office on the 30th floor of the building looking out over London at sunset. So it's a, a very technical description. Um, it did, it, it ticked the brief. Um, it's exactly what we've got an image of. Um, you can see there are little glitches in the in the images if you look at the third image there you can see the shadow doesn't quite reflect the actual bars of the window little things like that so it's not 100 percent perfect um, but i think if you had to compare that to giving a brief to a photographer or a designer um, i think that i did a pretty good job um, you'd probably find any human you asked to do the job would interpret the brief 
possibly very differently. Um, so you can see some other examples there. Um, a giant hand depicted as a maze field. So, so that one I like because it's a sort of very ambiguous statement. Um, so it's always interesting to see what you're actually going to get. So it does take a bit of trial and error, and it takes a lot of learning to to know you know what is a good a, a good prompt and how to improve those. So here we got a little bit better. Um, you can see the prompt is a realistic photo of a beautiful young African woman sitting in a stylish coffee shop, looking at her mobile phone. She has an excited expression on her face and dramatic lighting. Uh, so here you can see, you know, these images are really realistic. This is something you'd expect to see on Adobe stock or, or any decent stock image library. Um, here you can see the, the power of really what you can achieve. Um, great images at the drop of a hat and it's exactly what you want it to be. Um, so Dali there, you, um, there was some indication of, of pricing there, but there is a free trial, which is great. I think it gives you about 40 or 50 credits. You can go ahead and try it out. Uh, the user interface is very simple. It's literally just that little text bar where you type in your prompt and click generate. That is it. That's the, the complete user interface. Um, so easy to use. Go ahead, try it out, and let us know what you think. Um, okay, so, so what actually makes a good prompt? Um, so the three basic things you need is your actual subject, what do you want the image to be, its surrounding details, and then the style. So you can get as technical as you want um, using real um, photographic terms and, and technical expressions, um, but the great part about this AI is it uses natural language. So you can feel free to actually just express what you want in normal day-to-day -day language and that will work just as good. Uh, so here you can see rubber duck aliens visiting the earth for the first time, hyper-realistic, cinematic, detailed, and that's just the proportions there. And, and you can see the output is quite creative. Um, so what are some words that you can use in your search prompts? So we're not going to go through all of these. Um, these are just some examples. So you can afterwards, when you try out these apps, you can have a go at it. Um, so you've got art styles, painting types, decorative art, lighting. Time periods, artists, photography styles, common expressions that can increase results. So those ones are quite nice. So if you want to say it's a award-winning photography or high detailed, high quality, super realistic. Um, go ahead and add those in there to really try and create that image that you're looking for. Uh, the time periods is quite an interesting one. Um, for instance, if you're specifically looking for an image that you would traditionally see in the 80s or the 60s or anything like that, you can, you can go ahead and give a time period and that really helps to refine your, your image. Um, something very cool. Okay, so what do we do wrong here? So the prompt that was put in is a man without a beard. And the image we got was a man with a beard. Um, the reason for this is AI sees the word beard and will put it in. Now the fact that you said without is irrelevant to AI. Um, so the trick there is don't use negative keywords. Don't say what shouldn't be in the image, only use what should be in the image. So rather than say something like a cleanly shaped man. Okay, so our next tool is Jasper. The thing I really like about Jasper is that it's not just an image generator. Um, it has a lot of other tools there as well that, that are combined in there. So we've taken our, our same prompt that we used for our beautiful African lady in the coffee shop and, and we put it into Jasper and seen what we get. The output is Definitely different, um, but the quality and, and the, the type of imagery that we received is very similar. So uh, pretty good side-by-side uh, -side examples there in terms of the output. Then we tried giving it a, a slightly more local uh, request, um, asking for a person doing yoga with a view of Table Mountain in the background. So now obviously AI has its learnings it, it, it still needs to learn everything about the whole world. And, and so obviously its focus is most likely not Cape Town and Table Mountain. Um, so I'm sure if you type this in in a couple of weeks time, 
uh, Table Mountain is probably going to come up a lot better. Um, but AI relies on the images that were received. So it might also just be due to, because you get, you know, Cape Town looks different from depending on which side you're looking at it. So you might have to be more specific in saying you want the view of Table Mountain from Blobeck Strand, for instance. Okay, so coming back to just as features, um, if you look at it, boss mode is basically their, their standard feature and that's starting at $49 per month for 50,000 words. So here again, it's not just an image generator, it combines image, text, all of these tools. Um, but what I really like is if, if you look at the difference between boss mode and business, business has tailored AI brand voice. Um, and that is, I think, the tool of the, the, the future of AI is, is this brand voice, especially for businesses wanting to use this as a marketing tool. Um, imagine now taking your AI, creating an account, and putting all of your company documents through it so that it really learns your services, your products, um, putting in all your stock imagery, letting it really understand your visual style, the type of people, your personas, um, putting in there your, your, your brand voice, you know, what is your tone? Are you very corporate? Are you casual? And, and really teaching your AI to understand your brand. Um, and then it's really going to take control. And, and, and that's the power of AI is AI can then tell you when you do things that don't fit within your brand and it can correct it for you. Uh, it's very difficult to always be consistent, especially in, if you think of marketing agencies where we need to manage multiple brands. Um, so, so for us, it's a great tool um, to be able to manage the various brands, making sure that we always consider the brand voice and, and hone in on exactly representing that brand to a team. Okay, so Mid Journey, Mid Journey is um, also a very popular platform. I just put some examples there. Mid Journey works with Discord, so you can actually you can go and register if you've got a Discord account. If not, you can just create one, log into Discord, and you can actually see there's a a channel there on Discord where you can go and you can view and see exactly what people are generating. So just a few cute examples. You can see some of the prompts there are very short. Some of the prompts are extremely long. Um, there's one there, which is a logo design. You can see that person asked for edu world text logo, boy with book, beautiful nature, full quality. And the imagery there is great, um, but the word edu world uh, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work at all. Um, and I've seen that and, and with some of our tests as well, where AI does struggle to put the correct text in. I'm sure that's going to be a feature that you'll see improving over the next short while. Okay, our next platform is Runway. Now, the thing I really like about the Runway platform is it's broken up its AI into a lot of various tools that's really easy to understand. The user interface is, is um, easy to use, but it gives you a lot more options and, and things to configure rather than just a text prompt. Um, so some of the tools that they've got here, um, so text to image, that's very much like Dolly 2, where you put in your text prompt and it generates an image. Then they've got erase and replace. So there you can, you literally have a little pen that you can uh, highlight the area that you want to replace something. You put in your prompt of what you want to replace it with and it'll do that. Um, Image to image, so you can upload your own image and you can ask it to generate something new from that image. Um, infinite image, that's again uh, similar to Dali 2, where you can expand your image as far and wide as you want to, to give you more background or more image. Um, things like removing background and adding green screens, you know, those have been around for a while. Um, there's colorize, you can take a black and white image and ask AI to color it in for you. Great tool. Um, upscale image, you know, that's something that people have been working on in a long time, taking a low res photo and actually turning it into a high res photo. And in the block there with the little lions, that's AI training. And, and that's again, similar to uh, Jasper, you can actually train your AI on your image. So say, say you, you're, a, you're a persona of a brand, you can go and you can upload at least 15 images of yourself and it'll generate 
100 images of, of you in various styles, shapes, colors, um, anything you can imagine. And the nice thing about that is you can then combine these tools um, to, to take it one step further. So you can actually, when you want to generate a new image, you can use that AI learning of your image of yourself or of your product. And you can then ask for images of your product in different locations, different scenes, et cetera. So, so the, the options become endless. Um, the little video here, just showing the, the workflow of how you can actually combine these tools um, to create a full workflow to take your image from concept to final product. Get volume in it, didn't it? Between 90s television playing Nintendo in his room. The first few results were okay, but I reworked the prompt a little bit and tried to make it more descriptive of what I was imagining. The second generation attempt landed me here, which had most of the elements and the composition I was looking for. So I added it to my assets folder, then swapped over to the erase and replace tool. I erased the boy and entered a new prompt. Shot of a boy from behind watching television in a dark room. I loved that result. So then I started shaping the room how I wanted it using the erase and replace tool. Adding a door on the left, a lamp on the shelf. Then I tried adding a hamster in a cage, which generated a Palmeranian sized hamster. So after a few attempts, I settled for a sweet potato sized hamster and added Super Mario being played on the TV. This part doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be in the ballpark. The real magic, in my opinion, comes when we switch over to the image to image tool, which works based on the input image you give it, plus a text prompt. I started with the boy in his room playing video games on a TV, retro photography, 1990, high detail with a vintage feel. Medium, photography, mood, cinematic, and a low prompt weight, and a middle of the road blend strength. The results were pretty good, but then I started changing up some of the parameters and sliders to alter the results. For anyone curious, a low prompt weight will give you a more creative result, while a higher number will stay more true to the prompt. The strength slider is how much of the original image stays intact versus generating something wildly different. I changed up the prompt and the settings a few more times, then finally landed on something that resonated with me, except for this weird turned off TV down here. So I made one more trip to erase and replace and turn the TV into a shelf of toys instead. Time to download it and move on to the next one. Okay, great. So there you can really see how they've taken all the tools, combined them, and, and created a workflow. So take your image from concepts to final product. And uh, that I think was one of my big concerns with image AI is what if we create an image and a client then ask for changes to that image? Um, my fear was you're, you're going to have to prompt AI again and it's going to give you a completely different result. So how do you, how do you maintain that consistency? And, and that's a very good demonstration on that. Um, so it's definitely making it easier to, to make changes and edits. Um, we're still not at the point where it can generate uh, a multi-layer Photoshop file where you're able to then go in and, and make fine tunes to yourself. Um, but I'm sure the Adobe team are, are hard at work already on making those, teams uh, those tools available to um, things like InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator. Uh, I'm sure watch this space. It's going to be coming up very soon. Image generation models have taken the world by storm. It's now possible for anyone to turn their ideas into images using nothing but words. The explosion of creativity these models unleashed was years in the making. In 2021, Runway introduced Latent Diffusion, an AI system that was able to generate realistic images using an improved image generation technique. And in 2022, Stable Diffusion, a further improved version of Latent Diffusion that caused a tidal wave of creativity and mass adoption of the technology. Today, Runway is excited to introduce the next step forward in generative AI, Gen 1, a video generation AI system that can efficiently generate video in any style all while retaining quality and flexibility. Gen 1 is able to realistically and consistently apply the composition and style of an image or text prompt to the target video, allowing you to generate new video content using an existing video. We call this approach video to video 
and we're incredibly excited to share a few early use cases. Stylization mode. Transfer the style of any image or prompt to every frame of your video. Storyboard mode. Turn mockups into fully stylized and animated renders. Mask mode. Isolate subjects in your video and modify them with simple text prompts. Render mode. Turn untextured renders into realistic outputs by applying an input image or prompt. And customization mode. Unleash the full power of Gen 1 by customizing the model for even higher fidelity results. Gen 1 represents a pivotal step forward in generative AI, one that brings us meaningfully closer to realizing the future of storytelling. Okay, so there we go. You can see the future of video, and I think it's not too distant future. So have a look at Runway. Runway does have a lot of tools for editing video. Um, so a lot of great tools on there. Um, some of those tools are in the PowerPoint. Um, so do you believe that AI technology will completely replace human designers? What do you guys think? Is everyone done with the poll? Should we have a look at the results? Okay, so yes, eventually, 20%, uh, no, nothing can replace human designers, uh, nearly at 60%, I'm not sure, 20%. So <laughs> there's, that's uh, almost 50 50 if you add yes, eventually, I'm not sure, because I think anybody that's not sure is, is, is probably <laughs> reckons it might happen. Um, personally, uh, I, I, I'm not scared for my job. Uh, I think the, the trick though is if you're a designer and you're not adapting AI tools um, in the very near distant future, then yes, most likely, because you are going to be um, at the bottom of the pack in terms of your, your speed, your creativity, and the actual things that you can produce. So if, if you're an early adopter of this AI, I think you've got a very bright future in design um, going ahead. So I, I'm personally not worried about my job. Um, so I hope you're not either. Okay, so we've talked a bit about image, we've talked a bit about video, but what about AI and web development? So here we found this tool, it's durable.co and free tool we asked them to build a website for us and all it asked for was our company name and what we do and it built this website for us in 30 seconds um it's not great um but it does give you the the option to go through and regenerate and, and edit things um i i i was expecting it to ask for a little bit more information about our brand or maybe asking us if we had a logo um, or maybe if it wanted us to, to, to generate a logo for us, um, but this is what we got. So it's, it's possible, you know, if, 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 you're a, if you're a company that has absolutely no web presence, you know, why not give it a go? Uh, you got in 30 seconds, you got a website. <laughs> but uh, I do still feel there's a lot that can be done there. Um, here's using AI to develop code. So here we went back to ChatGPT. And we asked ChatGPT, you know, we built WordPress websites. Um, so we asked it to build a, a, a WordPress plugin for us. Um, so we put in our prompt. Let's check out the video. You can see how quick it happens. So here's our prompt. We asked it to um, write a plugin that deletes all the posts out of the media library after they reach one year old. So here it firstly starts off saying that, you know, it can't actually go and create the plugin and put it in just because it doesn't have access to those kind of files. Um, but then it goes ahead and, and provides you with all of the code that you need, explains where you need to put the code, how to implement it, um, and even gives you caution about testing and making sure that it's gonna do exactly what you want it to do. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> you know, if, if you have a, a web developer, um, most web developers aren't going to be that patient with you and, and, and give you all of that information. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised by 
uh, how informative ChatGPT was in helping me actually implement this plugin and even giving me some advice. So that was quite an awesome experience. Um, we haven't actually tried implementing this plugin. Um, maybe we should give it a go and, and let you guys know if it works or if it actually broke our website. Uh, so let's skip through to the next one. So here we actually took then a snippet of code that we had and initially or intentionally broke it and pasted it into ChatGPT and asked it to see if it could fix it for us. Let's see how it did. Oh, why not? Or we will. So here we, it was a basic syntax error. You'll see when I paste it in, I actually just removed one of the braces there and wanted to see if it would pick it up. So it automatically says syntax error, spots the error, and provides the corrected code for us. And even, even gave a little text expression at the end, actually letting us know what that particular broken snippet, what its function was. <laughs> so again, very polite, very informative. Thank you, ChatGPT. So pretty great experience there. Again, you know, this type of code is, is something that I wouldn't just copy and paste and, and use it on a, a live environment. Um, I definitely need to go and test it and make sure it does exactly what's expected. Um, so in closing on my section, uh, these little bottles here, this was, uh, while preparing this, it made me think of this little project that we did a few years ago, actually, for, for a client. And, and here, what we did is it actually used early stages of, of AI, um, where we generated little people and patterns, and, and we created all the different elements. So we created um, various clothing, various skin colors, various hair, various accessories, and, and the software used our artwork, all the various pieces to generate infinite amounts of variations of wine labels. Um, and so we were able to control, we were able to tell it um, certain elements need to be in specific positions, but things like the background, it had its own freedom to twist it, resize it, scale it. And, and it really shows you now with how advanced AI has become, um, how you can actually accomplish all of these things here. So efficiency, you know, for us to have manually created an infinite amount of designs would have taken infinitely long, um, whereas AI can do it instantly. Creativity, um, you know, going through this, if, if your mind hasn't been blown as to the, the potential opportunities that there are using AI, then, then we've done something wrong. Um, innovation, you know, if, if you're an early adopter of this, um, the world is your oyster. I think there is so much more that we can do as marketers, as designers, as developers. Um, suddenly, nothing is holding us back. With, with the help of AI, we have access to all the information in the world. Um, it's at our fingertips, and it's a resource that we can now physically use day to day. Um, personalization. I mean, if you think about these wine bottles, we, we're able to create infinite amounts of, of variations, but we're also able to tailor them to every single person. So if, if you think about your marketing personas, if you're running, wanting to run an ad campaign, instead of having to manually create dozens and dozens of adverts, um, AI can potentially, you can give it all the resources. You can say, you know, these are all the different personas that I would like to target. It can come up with the various texts, the various images, and put them together to create ads and target them to those specific people. And then accuracy, like we talked about, AI can actually, check things for you, it can monitor all the right fonts used, is our text always legible, and um, there's so much that can be used there. So I think anybody that's going ahead with their business without the help of AI is, is possibly making a, a really big mistake. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I, I, I myself had my doubts about AI, but the more I look into it, the more excited I've become about adopting this in our business, and I'm sure you will be too. Cool beans. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. I that was absolutely amazing. I, I love AI, and 
absolutely it doesn't get it right very often the first time because of the prompts and as we learn and become better at putting the prompts in it becomes more powerful i know we are over time if you're still with us thank you if you have to go i understand um i'm quickly going to run through um one or two little things uh, which you're welcome to you're welcome to watch the video and catch up later so just very very quickly maybe ask us what are the legal ramifications around this uh, what about copyright do i own this stuff and the answer is at this point in time you do you own uh the so legally everything created by ai is considered original and unique to you if somebody puts in the exact same parameters as you they could create something exactly the same or very very similar looking to what you have created and there are quite a number of lawsuits pending right now at the moment against open ai because uh, people are saying write me a novel in the style of this great um, author and so what, what they're thinking is that potentially, uh, you know, famous people can say, do not sample my work, you know, uh, that it will only be stuff that is in, you know, copyright free that can be sampled. So they are, it's still in its infancy, but at this point in time, you are, you own the work and it is considered, um, it is considered yours. So, you know, in the example that Mike used of, of a stock photography that you're creating yourself, you just saved yourself a whole lot of money in terms of stock video uh, photography creation. Um, and then also in terms of the future, just to reiterate that we do feel that, you know, if you are in a low skilled labor uh, role, you might, you know, be facing some challenges and the best and the fastest way is to, uh, you know, adopt AI at least to create to do your work better and to be able to offer that as a service to say, I'm an AI master and I can now, you know, help you because I'm really good at getting AI to work. Um, so it is important, I think, that all that companies pivot, uh, platforms pivot, individuals pivot, and uh, as more and more of the low skilled work is going to be taken over by technology. And we always knew that was coming. I think it just hit us a lot faster than we expected. I think we all expected it to be a slow build. And I think open AI has been a step change for everybody. Um, and this is only this is only GPT-3 we're looking at. GPT-4 is coming. They're busy working on GPT-4, and that's even more powerful. So, um, so I definitely think that is that is exciting. So, I think we're going to skip this poll. I think we'll all have a bit of poll fatigue. So, before I get to the list of resources, I just want to remind you that we at Shift One are here if you are looking to create a strategy that is unique to your business for business growth, brand building, community, uh, running campaigns, whatever your goal is. We can definitely help you put together an omni-channel strategy. Uh, because as yet, uh, we still can provide that um, that service that uh, that takes your business to the next level. So whatever it is that you're looking for, definitely give us a shot, including training and workshops. We are available for that. And let's just run very, very quickly through your resources that we've included for you. And a few more will be included in your pack when we send it out to you. So here's a, a mini prompt guide um, with a few more ideas. Here's some role-based prompts. Um, that you can try just to play with, um, as well as um, your links for all your copywriting. We've also included an AI copywriting detector because, yes, that exists. There is a free tool that is pretty accurate at, at predicting uh, whether something was written by AI and a very cool um, AI search engine that doesn't have ads. Thank you, Candice, for that one. And um, so there's some nice... Uh, there's some more links for you there for um, strategy, data mining, um, some of your design tools that we mentioned, and then just a couple of cool links on the side. So we've got uh, a website that gives, um, it's all the demos of all the AI tools is all. Somebody's collated that all into one. And then there's the Dolly prompt book as well. So I just want to thank you all for your time. You've been amazing. Those of you who have to drop off, you can drop off. But I think let's take a little bit of time if you're still around to get to some of the questions, if any of them have not been answered. So let's just have a look. Ashley asks, does all the image, all of this image creation become the property of the creator? Um, or does it uh, does it then become available for anyone to use? So uh, the content belongs to you and it's not available for anyone to use because in theory, you own the copyright on what you created using AI, unless somebody types in something very similar and comes up with a similar result. So I don't know if um, my other panelists have something they want to add on to that. So you can have a look. Each of the platforms have their own slight variation on that. Um, some of them do specifically say that it is your your copyright. It belongs to you. 
Um, there are some others that it becomes a, a sort of a general license, so it's public domain. Um, so it, it, it does depend on the platform that you're using. They do have slightly different terms and conditions. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions? We can just go through the chat quickly. So, Delene, we will be emailing you the recording. Upcoming webinars, we will send you the link as well, but you can subscribe to our mailing list for that. And um, let's see what other questions there are. So there's a question from Anka about um, on packaging design or not packaging specifically, but when designing with AI, will you be able to download the files as print files? So I think that's one of the biggest drawbacks is in terms of image generation, um, you can ask it for a, a 4K or an 8K image. Um, I haven't actually tested the, the quality of, is it really 4 or 8K? Um, I, I would hope so. Um, but a lot of the platforms are actually just basically giving you that screen image that you can just download. Um, so a lot of it isn't high quality, and but all of it is just image. So you're not able to generate for instance, a, a print PDF that's got specific colors or layers. Um, you're not able to download, uh, you know, create a design that, that you can have text as actual text um, embedded in a PDF. So there, there are a lot of restrictions there in, in terms of design. So at this point, it's, it's mostly just image, video. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's anything you can use in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or InDesign at, at this point, other than just generating images and text for your layouts. Yeah, awesome. So I think that's all the, um, the questions. Sham said, with the AI-generated website, do you need to have the domain name registered? Yes, so, so that, that AI-generated website, um, once you've done it, it does prompt you. So you can decide whether you've already got a domain and, or whether you've got hosting, and it actually takes you through that process. I, I didn't go through the whole process, but I, I could definitely see there are prompts there to then take the website live for you on your domain. Um, they probably have some self-hosted options as well. Amazing. I just want to thank everybody for your time and your patience. Thanks. We ran a bit over time, but I think that uh, everyone will agree that it was really, really, really interesting. <laughs> I thought it found it interesting myself as a marketer that I can be uh, here for this amazing transition in, you know, in digital marketing. It's just breathtaking. So um, give us a call if you'd like a strategy session with us. If you'd like us to discuss some of your training needs, we're here for you. Other than that, we'll see you at the next seminar. Thanks to my panelists and thanks everybody. You're welcome to pop us an email if you have any questions further. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thanks. See you at the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.